three, two, one, go. Good evening. Welcome to the show tonight, guys. I'm sorry we're a few minutes late. to uh, LA traffic for everybody. We're also getting set up here right now on Instagram Live, so we're going to make sure that's all set up. How are you guys today? It's a beautiful day in Southern California. What a beautiful day out. Finally, the sunshine's coming. So I guess we shouldn't complain, all right? So I want to make sure that I got you all set up there. So welcome to the show. We Thank have you. the beautiful Nefertari. Did I say it right? You did. Okay, and I didn't even practice. All right. <laughs> Yay, Plessy. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I know. We've been talking about this for a while, so it's great that we finally got it to make it happen. Definitely. We're echoing a little bit there. Uh, so yeah, I just... We met probably about just a I think two, it's two years ago now. Yeah, just mm -hmm. over two years, and we met at the Single Moms Planet organization, and you were the CEO president. Is that what we like to call you? Founder CEO. Okay, yes. good. Is this mic still on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good, because I couldn't hear myself. Yeah, I turned it down when you said you were echoing. We met about two years ago, and we had such a great time, and I love the organization. I love what it's about. Also, being a single mom myself, um, you know, my son's father was in the picture, and he always has been in the picture, and he's a great father, but I was a single mom and uh, didn't have a lot of support of my family. Uh, so, you know, I know what it's like to uh, raise a child, and uh, he's a successful young man now, which is an amazing, amazing thing. So That's awesome. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about you. How did you find, or how did you come up with the idea in your organization for Single Moms Planet? You know, at the time when I created Single Moms Planet, I was really looking for community mm -hmm. that I could relate to. Okay. And so I created one. Okay. Um, hey. All right, guys. Sorry, we're a little disheveled this today, but we have got our other guest here, Asia Saffold. Oh, Welcome. Oh, hi, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all these beautiful girls in the shot. So um, this is your camera here, and this is your camera. You're oh. sharing both the camera there. Okay. So, yeah. So, welcome. I'm glad you made it. Thanks so for good to see me. you. Sorry, yeah. I'm a tad bit late. Oh, it's okay. It happens. LA traffic is the worst. Oh, the worst. Yes, the worst. it is. So, we were just talking about how she had found Single Moms Planet. So, go ahead and uh, we'll just finish up on that. Um, I was looking for a community, and so I created one that I could relate to, that okay. I could feel comfortable sharing in. Mm -hmm. Um, sharing or with and that I could also be a support system for okay my mom raised me as a single mom mm -hmm. and she really didn't have a community when uh, she was doing it and okay. so she was fully by herself I'm very blessed to have their father mm. who co-parents with me with the boys but yeah. there's a lot of moms who don't have that support um, we have yeah. quite a few moms who are widows mm. um, and they're young widows too it's really wow. you know it can be heartbreaking and you know, they still have the full-time responsibility of being a mom and a provider, mm -hmm. and they just need that community support. And so yeah. um, that's really, you know, it kind of took its own life yeah. over time. It's developed into more than I even, when I was creating it, I always thought it would be something really amazing, but it, mm. it's definitely something where I asked the community, what do you need? You that's know, great. what are you that's guys smart. looking for? Because you know, where I was when I created it, where I am now, are two different spaces. Mm -hmm. And then there's women who are maybe just freshly divorced, um, mm -hmm. who need certain tools, or there may be moms who want to focus on business, who need support around relationships and love, mm -hmm. um, or they just want to heal. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not really interested in dating. They just want yeah. their own space. They just want to enjoy their kids. Yeah. Um, so there's all levels of moms. Even some moms have adult children. Yeah. Their kids are out of the house and wow, they just okay. want to be a part of a community that they still can relate to. That's so amazing because I couldn't even, I wish that something like that was provided for me when, because I was a really young mom and I had no idea what I was doing. There was no manual on how to be a mom, especially a single mom. And, you know, having to work and going to school. I was always working. I pretty much worked two to three jobs my whole life right and uh, you know to provide for my son and provide for me and then going to school to educate myself as well so continue education continuously so I mean and the support not having the support of my family unfortunately was you know a bigger thing and so it's really tough I mean you sometimes I mean I remember times where I really wanted to give up because 
I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't think I'm doing a great job, but, you know, <laughs> you you learn as you go that, you know, there's no right or wrong way. Well, there are, I guess, some wrong ways to do it, but there's no real right ways to be a mom, and you just kind of explore through it, and just, uh, right. you know, I felt like I fumbled my way through it, but, um, you know, now that I look back, you know, I made a lot of mistakes, but, you know, I have such a beautiful relationship with my son, and uh, we're such great friends now. And he's such a, like, he's so successful, and he's doing so amazing, and it's just, uh, I really wish that I had this platform. So I'm really grateful that these women have this, you know, and like you say, widows or mm -hmm. moms that are just getting out of divorce, because, mm -hmm. I mean, that in itself is stressful. It's huge. Yeah. yeah it's it's, it's a, a huge adjustment. I don't even know if you ever really fully adjust. You just make it yeah. work. Yeah. You know, um, it, 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 it can be very emotional for the mother and the father and also very much so for the children and even the unit around the family so yeah. the grandparents and the aunties they all are experiencing the trauma yeah and so you know we definitely are just excited to be that support system and you you said something a few minutes ago about you know feeling like you're not doing it right I mean even when I was I mean whether if you're married or you're divorced or you're a widow yeah. I think every mother feels like she's not doing something right yeah. you know yeah. no matter how old you are yeah. no matter if you're a 50 year old mom or a 17 or 16 year yeah. old mom mm -hmm. you know you're always trying to figure it out yeah. um, and sometimes you know even for me now you know I may do have a situation with one of my kids especially my older one he's growing into a teenager now and how old like, are your kids and I, I mean, yeah both I've never met your kids I met Asia's, Asia's little ones kids. and they're so adorable so how old are both of your kids I have an 11 year old son okay. who's going to be 12 yep. and I have an 8 year old who's going to be turning 9 okay okay yeah. and Asia and I have a daughter who is 5 okay and my son is 3 Okay, and they have a little, little red one. carpet, king and queen. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're like, woo, woo, they love take it. it. Oh my gosh, I love it. it. They're like, yeah, I get this, and then I, I love it because then they get bored all of a sudden. And they're like, and we're out. I love it. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. Like, we don't really know, like, you know, how it's done. And it's almost, it's hard, too, being in relationships as well. Like, you know, having the husbands, too, because mm -hmm. they also, you know, are going through the same type of experiences, just a little bit different than we are as well. So tell us some of the platforms that you provide in Single Moms. So um, is it uh, the community, so you get together? Um, is there support groups? Like how does it work so that we can explain to these? Because I know there's so many moms out there that can benefit from this. Sure, uh, Single Moms Planet, we have a couple of core focuses. Mm -hmm. One of them definitely is financial literacy. Okay. Um, actually, during our award show this year, we were able to implement our Smart Mommy, Smart Money, Smart Mommy, Smart Money program. Yeah. And we did that two years ago um, with New York Life. And mm -hmm. so we were really excited about that. So we definitely look at financial um, re a relationship with money, a healthy relationship with money. Yes is really important because it releases a lot of stress that may be there, um, you know, learning how to save, even if it's just a little bit, um, not rewarding your children for the trauma that's happening with spending money on them mm, is wow. really key. Um, I think that's, that's for great. any household, you know, because families who are yeah. married or divorced or whatever, they all go through things. Yes. And I think sometimes we try to overstimulate our kids or yeah. we, think that they need a lot of things when yeah. really they just want to sit on your lap mm -hmm. or they just want to yeah. hold your hand and walk in the park mm -hmm. or they just want to talk to you or just know you're there mm -hmm. you know they that's what they're more so looking for yeah. and so we, we we really try to implement those things and then we also do a camping trip every year oh my gosh how we fun. do that with the boy scouts of america okay we actually do it in the summertime yeah um we have a camp a trip that we do uh, to catalina island so we do that for two nights and so that's really awesome. And then we have a tennis camp that we have for the kids that's through UCLA as a sponsor. Okay. And then we have um, a mastermind brunch for the moms. And then we tear that off with another thing that we call uh, martinis and mommies. 
Nice. I love it. You're hitting all of it. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know, another idea, I, and I was, I'll just throw things out there as I go. And I know Asia and I had talked about it a little bit before, but um, the uh, we do self-defense courses. So, oh, yeah. um, yes, with um, Spice Williams, Crosby, and Jennifer Silverstein, they are the senseis and instructor of this course. And I've kind of just, you know, starting to get in there and piggyback on learning a lot from them. And they've been teaching me so, so much. But they are um, having another course uh, August, and it's at the House of Champions. And it's also, I believe they do them with Pierce College as well. But what a great idea to get the moms and also the young girls and children. And we also do it for um, guys as well, some of the seminars. So I would love for you guys to be part of that because what another great tool to put into the toolbox of, you know, being able to protect yourself and teaching these skills and tools to our kids too. Definitely. So, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, so let's definitely talk about that a little bit more. It's called I Fight for My Life. Oh, wow. And it's a phenomenal seminar and just uh, teaching you basically skills and techniques in case you were to be, you know, like mugged or robbed right. or, you know, um, Spice has a, a this story, you know, that happened to her, this experience where she actually got uh, robbed mm. with her son. Oh. And... Um, you know, it's just tragic, you know, and coming from a woman like that, that's a stunt woman, she's tougher than nails, and, you know, sometimes situations just get out of hand, and so this is a great thing that we can provide with you guys as well, so I'd love to partner up, and I know these girls would love to. I mean, they're amazing. That would be awesome. Yeah. For sure. So that would be cool. And Asia, how did you get involved? So I'd like to welcome to the show now Asia Saffold. She's uh, the queen of the balanced mom, mm -hmm. so she's going to teach us all her tips and tricks and uh, of the trade of being a balanced mom and a philanthropist and a humanitarian. Just uh, both wonderful, wonderful women. I met you both at about the same time, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to welcome you to the show as well, Asia. Thank you. Thank you for having yeah. me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm excited you're here. Yes, and alongside Nefertiri. So yes. happy to share <laughs> this interview with her as well. Um, you asked me how we met. Yes. Um, actually, we met through my husband. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who, the first year we moved to L.A., which was in the summer of 2016, yeah. um, we moved here with his team, the Rams, from St. Louis. So yeah. we were just getting our feet wet, and we really wanted to figure out how we can kind of come to the city and really make an impact because we were really active in St. Louis and yep. mm -hmm. we didn't want to let that die. We wanted to yeah. come here and like still in the in the spirit of the team and the spirit of just our family in general, we wanted to really come and make this our community. So I know he had attended one of her events yes. and he, mm -hmm. I remember him coming home and he was just bragging about how wonderful this event was. He was yeah. like, you have to meet Nefertiri. She's such a boss. <laughs> like, this is such an amazing that. organization. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because at this point I'm all about it. I'm like, I'm looking to get involved in, yeah. you know. And um, this was during the time we were filming our show yes. and I was actually doing a charity event. And okay. she came to my charity event, which was so awesome. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation, and we just kind of hit it off. And I was just so interested to learn more about her and her organization and what I yeah. could do to help and how I could learn from her. I was just, like, all about, you know. I love that. I, I love that. And just to let you guys know, so Asia's husband is Roger Saffold. He plays for the L.A. Rams. Uh, what position does he play? So right now he is at left guard. Okay. He's kind of played all over the offense, the offensive line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Amazing player. Um, just a wonderful couple and their family. It's so great to see you guys in action, as I call mm -hmm. it, because it's just you can see the level of respect. You can see the family unity, and I and I just I have a lot of respect for you and. Uh, and so it was great that we could bring both of you on and share your expertise and, and just, you know, family values and, and giving back into the community. I mean, being yeah. a new person in, in, you know, coming from St. Louis, that's also hard too, knowing because I came from Canada, mm -hmm. knowing to get your feet in the door, you know, with anything and types of communities and giving back and acts of service. Mm -hmm. So good for you for doing that and Thank just you. jumping in, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I see the dynamics phenomenal between the two of you. I know that, um, are you working with the Nefertari on the, like, is that on the board or for... 
We well, actually, we we have thought about Asia for the board. She doesn't know that. Oh, see, I, I, you know what? I am oh. clairvoyant. I'm not gonna lie. I might have oh known gosh. this. I don't know. Maybe I'm just creating a position for me. Oh my but, gosh! So uh, I was on her committee okay. putting together mm -hmm. the um, awards <laughs> this show this year, which was yeah. an amazing experience, by oh, the way. Great. Like, Aww. I love being on the committee. Like, just how she had it structured, like yes. just, I mean, putting together an event of that scale, so it takes so much, and yeah. she just had a wonderful team, and everybody was just really excited about putting it together, Yeah, and I learned so much, and met some really great ladies. I love that too, because that's what I saw, that was what I really enjoyed about it, and that's why, you know, I reached out to you too, it was like, can I come next year, because mm -hmm. watching everybody, you know, work together, and everybody just wanted to be a part of something, you yes. know, because mm -hmm. when you create something, a platform like this, that people want to be a part of, you know it's a really good thing. I mean, you're helping so many people. People have so much respect for you. And it's such a great thing for so many people. And what I love about it the most is that instead of like tearing other women down, we're empowering other women and we're helping and yeah. we're learning and we're wanting to learn. And it's like, hey, what can you teach me? How can I learn? How can I be better? How can I be a better mom, be a better business partner, whatever it may be. But just learning from other women and strong women. And that's what I love because, you know, it's very rare that you see it. And, uh, you know, especially, um, you know, being in L.A., it's... Uh, <laughs> it's a different type of city, yes. that's for sure. Were you born and raised here? I wasn't. I'm originally from New Orleans. Oh, and I okay. grew up in the Bay Area. Okay. Yeah, but okay. I've been here for since I was 18. But I traveled all over the yeah. world. Um, but L.A. is different. I mean, you, you find your core people. Yeah. Uh, and you, you know, most of the, a couple of the girlfriends I've had, they're, they're, I mean, they're 20 year, 25 year friends, nice. you know, you, you kind of hold on to them. Yeah. Um, and you keep them close yeah. because, you know, it's an interesting city. People typically come to LA because they want something out of the city. Yeah. Right. So even when they're making friendships or relationships are usually not a hundred percent authentic because they're still based around the person's goal. They're mm. here to make something happen. Yeah. And so if they can utilize you to get to that goal, mm -hmm. however they can get to that goal, they will, you know. Yeah. And so I appreciate when someone's really clear with me, yes. you know, from the beginning, hey, this is what I want to do, can you help me? Right. Versus nice. creating a pretend friendship. Yeah. That's really unauthentic, nice. and that's only based around when you need something. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And so I think oh, yeah. um, that's where so I think some people get a little bit turned off by LA. But I really yeah. love it. I love the city. I, I think the too. weather's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, I think you have to kind of enjoy the Hollywood moments, but don't be don't be Hollywood. I, yeah. You know, I think that's yeah. what's saved me. Yeah. And no drugs and no massive drinking or anything like that. You know, yes. you have to be careful with that. I've seen some really, really beautiful mm -hmm. women um, just disintegrate in front of my eyes. Where I'm mm -hmm. like, who are you? It's, yeah. it's like it's scary. It's sad because it, you can't it get swallowed scary. up in a big city like this. Mm -hmm. and. And, uh, you know, like I always tell people, people go, oh, you know, I, you know, my friends back home in Canada are like, oh, what's up, Hollywood, when I come home? And I'm just like, I am not. <laughs> You're like, no. I am not Hollywood. Right, it's, not. You know, it's what I do, but it's not who I am. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, that doesn't define me. And I never want to, like, immerse myself that much into it. I want to be able to you know, really stay humble and have that that's humility mm -hmm. to be able to be of service to other people. And that's, you know, that's my goal and that's my dream. And that's what I believe my purpose on this planet is. And that's why when I meet women like you and I see what you've done and what you've created and how you've created it together and the friendships. And I mean, there was just all these women pulling together and the men too. And oh yeah. That's, I, I, you guys had the boys working. I was like, good girls, <laughs> you know, yeah. but they wanted to be there and they wanted to be part of that. And, um, you know, I just, I think it's such a phenomenal thing. And I hope that you guys can really check out this organization, especially moms out there, single moms and, you know, just mm -hmm. reach out and just grab onto these ladies because this is a phenomenal organization. I've never seen anything like it. And I really wish that I had something like this so you know if I can be part of any way to help you I would love to be part of that because it's just it's great 
Uh, I want to know what you think the most, you know, the key thing is, is that that moms need from you in this organization. What are moms what looking are for thinking, the most? Because I know, like, I'm I'm internal, right? Yeah. And so I really, I would I would even say, like, what do you think from some of the women that you've, because Asia has, has been our media partner for two yeah. years, and so she's interviewed a lot of the honorees mm -hmm. and the moms. Yeah. And, yeah. And I'm sure she's had conversations that I probably wasn't a part of, right? Or, or what they've pulled out of yeah. this organization right. so far, too. Right. And the biggest thing. And mm -hmm. even for me, because I was thinking about that, I think the fact, just the community aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Like yes. you said, like, when people are going through this kind of stuff, like these traumas, sometimes they don't have anybody to turn to. Sometimes they don't have anyone to mm -hmm. talk to. And mm -hmm. Nefertiri has created a space mm -hmm. where it's just... You can talk. To, you can just walk up to somebody, and they can just tell you, you know, whatever. And no one's judging anybody. It's just That's a safe so space true. where yeah. people can just talk about life and talk about their circumstances, and then offer ways that they can help each other. Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways. It's like you know, mm -hmm. you may meet mm -hmm. a chef, or you may meet a, anybody, and yeah. you guys can go back and forth with, you know, how you guys can collaborate to help each other. Yeah, and I think that community aspect is like something that really stands out and even when I talk to people uh, my friends that are single moms that live in other states and I tell them about this organization I'm like oh man I wish you could and they're like I wish we had something you know yeah. where, and I'm like girl like it's coming like it's a way like, <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. it's like I just got goosebumps it's like bring this worldwide because yes. I you know bring it out to Canada bring it to that wherever we can definitely because this is what's needed it is it so is a global needed. issue. It is, you know, and and I, I know Asia's Asia's married. We actually have quite a few married couples that mm -hmm. participate and volunteer. Yeah, uh, we have women who are married who become members of the organization. Yeah. They come to our events and. Mm -hmm. We actually, we get, I get phone calls and emails from women who are like, I'm considering divorce. And mm -hmm. so they want to know, is that the route they want to take or is it not? What does yeah. it look like? Because sometimes you see women doing it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I can do that. And, and I'm not saying that you can't, but we're not advocates for divorce. Mm -hmm. Like, I Absolutely. am an advocate for marriage. Yeah. Um, or, you know singleness of choice mm -hmm. you know if you want to be single that's totally okay too but yeah. if you you know if you want to be married if you want to stay married I'm all about that a lot mm -hmm. of our moms have actually gotten married while they've been a part of our program wow you know which it. is awesome like I love seeing those stories when they're like I'm engaged and I'm yeah. getting married and I mean it's really awesome yeah you know especially when they're you know blending their families yes. and they're getting that support that they need from that mm -hmm. significant other yeah. it's a beautiful thing it is and blended families that's a, that's a tough thing I haven't done it I've, I've done it I've done it it's uh <laughs> It's a lot of work, but you know, it is a beautiful thing if you can really make it work. And, and if I can give any advice on that. Please um, do. Because, I, I give me some. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've actually, um, I've done it twice. Okay. Um, yeah, with a long relationship and then my ex-husband. And um, it was tough because, you know, you're not the parent. And I think you just, mm. understanding that, the biggest thing for me, and I always get emotional when I talk about this because... Um, I was, you know, uh, raised with a stepmom and a lot of stepdads, and um, the thing was is that I never felt like I was loved by mm -hmm. the the step parents, mm -hmm. and it, it caused a lot of problems. And I was always the cause of their problems. I was always told this growing up, and I always felt really left out, and and I just felt unloved and unworthy, and you know, it really stemmed into a lot of my relationship problems growing up. And um, so the biggest thing is it's not the kid's fault, and we always mm -hmm. have to remember, put yourself in their shoes. They're just innocent little beings that yeah. have no idea what's going on. They're not in control of this, and we as adults need to put ourselves in the shoes of these kids and go, hey, look, they're innocent. You need to love them as they're your own or don't be in this relationship because you've accepted this as a blended family. And if you can't accept it with all of its, you know, beauty and all of its little nooks and crannies and all the things that aren't is fun, mm -hmm. then you can't do this. Mm -hmm.
you know, I remember the first time it was like, oh, we're going swimming, and it was like the girls are screaming, and they're in, like, getting their little bathing suits on, and I'm like, I had a boy. I don't know how to do this. Like, I, like they're really yelling loud, and I'm like, I'm like, are they supposed to yell, like, this loud? And I remember my ex-boyfriend being like, yes, they're girls. He's like, you're a girl, too. You remember being like that? I was like, no, I was a tomboy. I didn't yell like that. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Just- Right? And then it switched. Mm-hmm. And then I went, oh, wow, this is not right. And then I, I shifted my thinking and went, okay, this is where if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. If not, it's time for me to check out. Right. And and that's when I really learned a lot about myself. And I had asked, I prayed for patience and tolerance. And then I got two stepchildren. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah. and a boyfriend. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> that's going to really create a, a lot of tolerance and a lot of patience. And I learned a lot from it. You know, it's not for everybody, but it is an absolutely beautiful thing yes. when you can step into, you're not in that role. You're not, you know, their new mom. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, it's just a beautiful thing. I shared this story once before, but um, I remember my stepdaughter going, my mom doesn't wear stuff like that. <laughs> and I had this little bikini on <laughs> and we were about to go to the pool and she's like, my mom doesn't dress like that. And she kept saying it. She said it about three times and I went, oh my, and I kind of started to giggle and I go, you know what? I bet your mom, whatever she wears looks beautiful. It's amazing, right? Absolutely. And that's the thing too. You have to have the level of respect for the other partner too. Sure. And no matter what the circumstances are. So those are my, um, you know, little tidbits for the blended families. And I know a lot of people are, are going through it and struggling and and also, you know, doing a great job at it Driving as well. Driving at it, right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we just, you got to put in the work and communicate. I think communication is the biggest thing on anything. Sure. Yeah, definitely. In life. And so let's talk about a balanced mom. How do we be a balanced mom? And you've got your career, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're a businesswoman, a I mean, philanthropist. you've got a lot of stuff going on. I follow her oh. social media, I love it. I'm like, 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 so I love it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. So the thing about it, the thing that I love, um, the things that I'm learning and growing through, mm-hmm. um, when it comes to balance and like doing so much and having so many multi-passions and yeah. having so much that you want to accomplish, so much you want to yeah. do. Um, just so much that I've been learning that it's a, it's very unique to every individual. Yes. So it's not a like in the box kind of solution for everyone. Yeah. It's like something like a journey that you kind of go through on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for me, it just started with believing that it was possible, believing that nice. I could and just kind of getting rid of that like limited thinking and Mm -hmm. that thinking of scarcity and that and just kind of understanding like hey I was kind of put here to live out a full life you know Mm -hmm. and I think it's possible so just kind of having that epiphany and knowing how it's made me feel I want to be able to share that same thing with everybody every woman every mom every mom to be everyone that's thinking becoming a mom like I've just been really passionate now just kind of spreading that message and Mm -hmm. what I've been trying to do is kind of provide different tools different resources yeah um, different just conversations you know interviewing moms and kind of figuring out hey what's worked for you like seeing how in their life you know they have been striving to get their balance and Mm -hmm. it's working for them so Mm -hmm. it's just been a learning process and it's been beautiful and it's been really fun I love that and I love what you said too and I know we all have the same core values when it comes to this it's that not giving up attitude and you know in you don't it doesn't necessarily have you don't have to necessarily be a mom out there too so whoever's listening to the show if you're not a mom that's okay if you're a pet mom like Mm -hmm. if you have a plant I like anything just you know still keep pushing forward and that's the thing that I really want to emphasize today is that no matter what you can be successful at whatever you want just keep fulfilling you know those goals and just keep meeting the goals and not giving up because a lot of us are told that we're not supposed to be doing this we're not supposed to be you know these are men's jobs or whatever they may be and stick to being a mom right but you know it's like just Mm -hmm. going okay like you said living like living your life outside the box it's not like 
do this, do that. Everything's not supposed to be perfect. And it's like, it doesn't look like that. Life does not look like that. So it's okay to fall, get back up, mm -hmm. and then keep striving forward. And in a lot of us, you know, we get beat down and life kind of grabs us. And when you're starting an organization mm -hmm. or you're being a mom or you're being a wife or whatever it may be, we have to remember that we can do these things. Mm -hmm. Because it yeah. gets to be, you know, I listen to audios every single day and my friends probably think I'm crazy because I send them audios every day at like four in the morning and they're like, okay, you should be sleeping, you're crazy. And I'm like, get up, get up, wake up, <laughs> get going. I'm like, come on, you can do this. And they're like, oh my gosh, lay off the caffeine. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, and I, I think about it. it. But it, that's the way it has to be. Like, get up out of bed. And I love what Tony Robbins always says. He's like, get up with like... You're, there's so much fire in you when you hit the floor people go running because they know you're on you are ready yeah right. I am like on I was like I don't touch the floor I don't even touch one toe on the floor unless I know I'm on I, <laughs> I'm like okay prayers are done a little meditation let's go right you know so what is your no give up attitude how do you get through every day oh wow you know I am a person that knows my strengths mm -hmm. and I know my weaknesses and so one of my weaknesses is I have to have accountability mm. I have to tell people when I'm up to something ah, I love that because if I keep it yeah. to myself it has a high probability of not happening or being okay. delayed do you write it down um not all the time okay not all the time you know a lot of times I may just say that's what it is mm -hmm. and I, I'll claim it and then yep. I'll say you know I'm gonna do this and I, I need you to to make sure I do it so mm -hmm. just call me yep. once a week and check in with me and I'm gonna call you and say you know what I don't know what I'm doing today I'm confused and then mm -hmm. I just need you to remind me what I'm doing because nice. sometimes I might write it down and it still doesn't register but when I know that I have other people on the on the on the mm -hmm. on the line. Yeah. Like there's it's bigger than me. Yeah. I'm really good with things that are bigger than me. Yeah. It's still a little hard for me to love self first. Mm. Like I typically want to take on something big that's bigger than me versus yeah. like taking on myself of course right yeah it's i like... can fully relate <laughs> every day it's like oh but if i pay attention over here to everybody and everything else and all these goals and dreams and my bucket list then right. i have to focus on me right right yeah i get it i get it yeah, yeah. so i think like this year i definitely have been like okay i need to like put me on this list mm -hmm. right what would that look like to you? Because I'm going to challenge you today because okay. we all want to grow and I want to empower everybody and I and I expect the same from you guys to challenge Definitely. me too and I love that. Um, but what would that look like for you? So would it be going to the spa? Would it be going to a weekend away and just putting your feet up, turning your phone off for an hour? What would that look like for you, putting you first? Definitely, I, I want to work out. Okay. I have been slacking. I used to be, I used to be, I was a dancer for like six years, yeah. which was awesome because mm. I, there were other girls on the dance team and we met three times a week yeah. and we danced for two hours mm -hmm. and I was in great shape because mm -hmm. I'm not a huge gym person and yeah. I really won't go if I'm going by myself. Yeah. And so working out, um, I would love to make sure I do like a spa once a month, mm. but I feel like I need to schedule them yeah. in advance and yeah. just make the appointment yeah. in advance because something always comes up. You do, and that's the thing because we okay. So our kids are whatever they're in. Say mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm going Canadian on you guys. So hockey or like you know baseball or they're in ballet or dance. So we schedule yeah. all these appointments for our kids. We get them on time to all these things. Our husbands, we pick up after them. We we make them dinner, we do whatever we need to do. So why can't we take two hours, put it on the calendar, call the spa, and it's booked. And hey guys, right. guess what? This is my spa day, and this is where I'm going to be, and my phone's going to be off. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to let you know. It's true. Um, and so I started doing things like that because I found that I needed to give myself permission. Yeah. I right. needed myself permission to relax, rejuvenate, and restore myself. Because I was so depleted at one point that I had nothing left to pull from. And I started just basically like kind of going inwards because I knew that I wasn't going to be as significant and impact a lot of people. And that's what I believe I'm good at. Right. 
And right. so I was like, okay, what do I need to do? So I started going to the beach and just sitting on the beach and not uh. telling anyone where I was because I just, I needed to get away and I needed that space for me for clarity. Without that clarity, it's all these, we got this to do, we got that to do, mm -hmm. I'm responsible for this, I'm da 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 and it's like go, 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 go. So when you're on a speed that's so quick, how are we supposed to slow us down? Yes. You have to so take true. that time. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to check back with you. So okay. starting out workout, if you ever need a workout buddy, I will be there for you in a heartbeat. Oh, that I'm, would be awesome. And I, I, you want to have to go to the gym and lift weights. We can go do some fun stuff on the beach. Um, just like do jump squats or like do some fun things or even push-ups and stuff like Up, that. Down. Yeah. yeah, let's all go. We'll do yeah, it. I would fun. love it. And, yeah. you know, and just uh, time for you. And, it's true. Uh, yeah, just put it in the schedule, in the calendar, and block it off. If you have a calendar on the wall that everybody mm -hmm. sees, then everybody knows. And highlight it in a pink highlighter <laughs> or a yellow <laughs> highlighter. This is my day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so try that because I know that it's been really good for me because... I really struggled with that for a lot of years and taking that time for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you the same question. Um, okay, so I, so I'm actually first in this journey that I've been on. Yeah. In more recent times, not always. It hasn't always been that yep. way. But in more recent times, I've been a lot more intentional about self and kind of mm -hmm. developing myself and putting myself first more Good. so. So I mean. I will go to the spa or I will get a massage. I work out. Yeah. Um, I'll go through you know, dips and valleys, yeah. but I try to work out as regularly as I can and kind of keep my body and my health up top because, oh my God, like the health portion of it, like yeah. this the exhaustion that you feel yeah. whenever you're not taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. yeah. all types of different physical things, health things, it's just not worth it. So I'm like, yeah. can't let myself get there. I gotta at least take care of my health. So um, that, but something that I've been kind of putting off, um, and it has a lot to do with, like you were talking about the clutter and like the mind mm -hmm. clutter and yeah. having so much going mm -hmm. on and needing to take time to, you know, yeah. either get away or, yeah. you know, just go sit in nature. Um, I have been like uh, kind of accumulating all of these things in our household and my mind and everything, and I have mm -hmm. been putting off doing this declutter challenge that I'm like mm -hmm. in the middle of creating. Nice. So I'm like, I'm the type of person, I'm super motivated by like, like you said, keeping mm -hmm. accountable by others. And like, I have to challenge myself. Like I'm like yeah. competitive to myself for some, <laughs> like some out. But I like, okay, I'm like, I just wanna have a week, seven days, and I wanna all these things that it's just like, cluttered in my house, in my digital, mm -hmm. in my mind, like, let me yeah. just take care of it. Let me just minimize, yeah. you know, let me get rid of some things that's not helping me 